Hey there everyone, this is Yui. Welcome to another bonus video from FTB Academy. This time we're going to look into automatically generating ores and processing them. So let's jump into it. You're going to need a few things here. I've already made most of the stuff. Most importantly, you're going to need to make yourself a slaughter factory and set it up. I would recommend putting it with your mob spawns for now and simply turning off whatever killing device you have. In my case, I'm using the grinder. So the whole point of that is you need to get pink slime because you need to make lasers. We're going to make four laser drills and one laser base. I already went ahead and made them. There's a quest for them. Uh, the base is easy. That's just diamond mainly and then a gold glowstone machine casing it's nothing big but the laser drill needs the lens and each lens needs four pink slime so you're going to need 16 pink slime to get this set up running all right so with that we're also going to take in well the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to have ender chests oh i need one more chest my storage chest I have a set of colors which I will be using to process some of the ores and then I have a few exporters and I might need cable so let me grab some cable I should already have some wires with me for power we'll use an advanced test locator and hardened flux ducts that's good Yes, okay, so with these, we're going to set it up. We're going all the way down our mine, just because it's easier this way. The laser base needs access to bedrock. So you can set it up up top and dig your way down, or you can just set it up near bedrock. And that's what I'm going to do. Let's see, here do I have... Nope. I just need a building block real quick so we can put the base in the middle. There we go. And then if we take this out, you'll be able to see it when it's all set up. Now these drills need to go one space away. Uh, facing the other direction though. If you didn't know, the crescent hammer can be used to rotate blocks, including pistons. So, make use of it. It's a really nice tool, even if you're not using it for wires. Alright, we got that. Oh, I need a servo. I do not have a servo. Let's see here. Let me see. I need one, two, maybe. I'll just make three. Three should be sufficient. I think I only need two servos for what I'm going to do. Alright, so for this setup, the base does not need power, but these laser drills do. So set up your wires for the drills. Alright, now I'm going to give it... Oh, Give it one of my test locators, and they should start getting power. And they should start getting power. Why are you not getting power? Mm. Do it. Let me go. I'll go check my power setup, and I'll be back in a second. And we're back. I don't know what was wrong with it. I moved it over here and it's working now. But basically, once it puts in the RF, the RF gets used up right away and it charges this laser base right here. This isn't going to be the fastest because I don't know what the transfer limit of these test locators is, but it doesn't seem to be that high. So I might swap this out in the future. Yeah, because that's not... Let's see. Maybe I have another one. Maybe if we double it up.
Maybe. There you go. Well, the machines are gaining power now. Looks like that's about as fast as it'll go. They definitely have power. So three. I think two might empty it. Eh, two. Two looks good. Two or three. Play around with it. Anyways, what this will do is if you look up, say, the laser, you can hit uses on the drill. Not the drill, the base. And there will be ten pages, two wars each page. Give you a rough idea of what you can get. They can get your diamonds, your emeralds. Uh, this is the only source of platinum, unless you're using the pulverizer with, like, nickel. Or at least I think it's the only source. Well, the orchid also. Oh, wrong page. Now, if you look at this, you'll see a lens here on each side. I did not put any lenses in, which means mine will be mostly random. But if you put in the lens for the ore you want, say we want more draconium, you could put in purple lenses in these slots, and it will give you more draconium based compared to at least this setup. So play around with it if you need other types of ores. So what we're going to do now is just set up our... Uh, storage chest we're gonna get a cable out if I have one here we go and then a servo this does not need to be resonant I've just been using them because I can there we go so now we have basically something that will constantly produce ores as long as we have power and it will send them to storage now what we can do with that is if we go back up go do I have everything I need I think so go into our basement area I've got all this weird stuff still so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a second or well a fifth uh, ender chest this is just for me it's gonna be black 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 from exporting from storage and then another black because it's smelting items So place this cable right here well yeah that'll work that won't since we're going to be exporting a bunch of different things I am going to use two exporters I am going to go to storage and grab out some of the various ores that I want to export I don't have a lot right now and especially since it hasn't been running. I don't know if diamonds can go in here. No, they can't. So I'll have to set up something else for diamonds. And what about lapis? Lapis can. Oh, the crusher might be better. I don't know. Uh, however you want to do this is fine. I'm just going to pull out some of my ores and what I'm going to do is I am going to throw them in the induction smelter. I get tin. Cobalt, sure. Copper. Ardite. And then as I get them I can fill out these lists. But basically I'm just going to put them in here to export. And then when this one fills up, that's what that second one is for. Because like I said, there's 10 pages of ores, which means there's 20 of them. There's going to be a few you can't put through here. I am not going to worry about giving the stack upgrade, because once it catches up, it'll be fast enough. Now with the other one, the link chest for it, I'm going to put down here. And this will... I changed out my cables underneath to this uh, signalium plated item duct. So that means I can now just extract from this chest. 
and this will go up into the induction smelter that we set up for voiding out some items well in this case it is melting down some of the gold stuff and it's still exporting sand that's not going to be fast enough well it should be fine once it catches up the sand is a little slow i have swapped over my stonework factory to producing sand and getting exported so if we check sand right here it should be going well it'll be going up and down but it'll constantly be going up so we have an unlimited supply of sand going into the induction smelter and then the ores will get exported they'll get tossed in the induction smelter melted down for basically double what the value is so if you look up gold ore go to the induction smelter you'll get uh we're doing sand so we'll get double the ores and potentially some slag or rich slag depending on what we're using this is just saving us a step of throwing it through a pulverizer what we can do is grab say a crusher this is a quest so i'm going to pull that out real quick and then I'm going to update it to a double crusher. Oh, it's crafting some of the, uh, whatever they are. All right. And now I need a couple more chests. And for this, we'll do say coal. Uh, let's see, ores. We'll do diamond. What about emerald? Diamond crucible, pulverizer. Yeah, so we'll just throw that in the crusher as well. Redstone is better in there, but I think it has an induction smelter. Oh, we'll figure that one out. Uh, black quartz. What about lapis? Uh, lapis is fine in there. Oh, so just a few. And then we'll just set up another chest. Oh, this one's going to be... Okay, whoop. Let's see here. Ink. And... What's a good crusher color? I don't know. I'll just use red. That'll work just fine. Red and black. There we go. Exporter. And you can have these guys. Yeah, I don't have any over there, so that'll work. Put those away real quick. And then the fun part of throwing another machine somewhere in this crowded place. Uh, there's my output. We'll just put it here. And we'll give it... Yeah, that'll work. Oh, no, that won't work. Oh. Now let's find out. Where's my item ducks? Does that connect? Yes, it does. All right. Let's throw in... No, this isn't going to work. What am I thinking? We'll put it up top. That'll work. Give it this other servo. And we need to change its color. And where's my wrench? I don't want it to think about going in here. Perfect. Turn you on, ignored. It won't work because it has no power. Let's just make a big mess of everything here and there. 
That'll work. Oh, I need one more servo. Because that's a crusher and not a pulverizer. So it will not automatically export ores for you. Ignored. There we go. So now we have two different ways of dealing with ores. They will either go into the induction smelter and doubled, or the crusher, and some will double, some will whatever. Like, lapis that we throw in there will be eight times, I think. Stuff like that. But that's about it. I just wanted to show you how to set something up like that. Automatic ores, and then how to process them right afterwards. That way you're not clogging up the storage with uh, the ores themselves. Anyways, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.